Welcome to this video in which we will do the analysis of a block that's resting on a ramp and the assumptions that we'll make about this block and ramp is that uh, all of the forces applied to it go through its center of mass and so we can actually treat the analysis as a particle which means that we won't have to worry about moments we'll just have to work at, worry about uh, forces. Um, so our goal is to use statics uh, to determine the tension that these poor workers need to keep in this cable in order to keep our 40,000 kilogram block from uh, sliding down this ramp. We'll assume that the rollers underneath the block are put there in such a way that the whole thing is frictionless. In other words, uh, there's no force opposing the um, block rolling down the ramp except for the workers. So, um, the first thing that we want to do then is uh, create a free body diagram. And to do this, we will cut the block free from its environment. So, we'll cut it here at the, at the rope. We'll cut it off the rollers. And that will leave us then with just the block. So we're doing a free body diagram of the block. So let's draw the block. Here's our block. I've sort of exaggerated the angle here. Hopefully that won't be too confusing. And now the points at which the block interacts with the environment, we had this force applied by the workers, which we'll call T for the tension in the cable. We have, if we go back to our picture, the ramp will exert a normal force on the block, um, but again, because the rollers are set up so that it's frictionless, uh, there won't be any force perpendicular to the normal force. So the only force that the ramp will exert on the block is a normal force. So the normal force will look something like this. We'll call it N. And from the center of mass, we will have a gravitational force, which we will call W. And again, things are set up in such a way that the angle between the rope and a horizontal surface is 6 degrees, and uh, the angle between the normal and vertical is 6 degrees. Okay, that's again from the geometry of our problem, uh, from the way the, the ramp is set up. Okay, so now all we need to do, uh, again it turns out uh, we, we don't know T, we also don't know N, we do know W. W will be the gravitational constant and we'll use 9.8 meters per second squared times the mass of the block which is 40,000 kilograms. And so the weight is going to be 392,000 newtons. Okay. So we'll go about solving this two ways. Um, and hopefully you'll see by the time we're done uh, how your choice of coordinate systems can actually make uh, uh, your solution either easier or more difficult. So we'll start off by just assuming a standard uh, x and y coordinate system. So this is x and this is y. The x coordinate system is horizontal, the y coordinate system is vertical. And now we need to find the components of t and n in the x and y direction. And then because we're doing a static uh, analysis, we'll sum the components in the x direction and set them equal to zero. We'll sum the components in the y direction, set them equal to zero, and solve the resulting system of equations. So for t, the component in the x direction looks like this. The component in the y direction looks like this. Again, t is a value we don't know. Uh, the magnitude of t we don't know. We do know its direction. 
So we know that the horizontal component is going to be the magnitude times the cosine of six degrees. The vertical component is going to be t times the sine of six degrees. Similarly, we need to break the normal force into components, so we get a horizontal and a vertical. And the horizontal force, the magnitude is n sine 6 degrees. And the vertical, this guy here, is n cosine 6 degrees. We already know what the weight is, and since the weight um, is in the y direction, uh, going down, we know that there's no horizontal component uh, to the to the weight vector. Okay, so let's get the summation of the forces in the x direction. And with that, we have um, this term, which would be t cosine 6 degrees. And we have this term. It'll be negative because our arrow is pointing to the left. So we have n sine 6 degrees, and that's equal to 0. Uh, let's do the summation of forces in the y direction. OK. So in the y direction, we have this term, t sine of 6 degrees plus uh, this term, n cosine 6 degrees minus the weight, minus this guy, which is 392,000 newtons, and that's equal to 0. OK, so we have a system of equations in two unknowns, and uh, you can now apply your favorite approach to solving a system of two equations and two unknowns. I'm going to take what for me is the absolute easiest path, which is to use Wolfram Alpha. So um, I have my variable t times cosine of 6 degrees minus my variable n times sine of 6 degrees equals 0. And uh, t sine of 6 degrees plus n cosine 6 degrees minus the weight, which is 392,000 equals 0. And I tell Wolfram Alpha to solve that. And uh, it comes up with all sorts of uh, messy stuff that I really don't want to see. And uh, basically, we get then that n is to three significant digits, 390,000. And t to three significant digits is um, about 41,000. OK. So we have our solution then. We have that uh, t is 41,000 newtons. And our normal force is 390,000 newtons. OK. So if we go back to our picture, that means that these poor, poor people here are having to pull with a force of 41,000 newtons. That's a lot of force. OK, so that's one way to do it. It's uh, extremely straightforward. Uh, you end up with the system of two equations. It turns out that if you want to be a little more sophisticated and choose a somewhat different coordinate axis, you can um, actually solve the problem in such a way that you don't end up with coupled systems of equations, which, uh, depending on how you like to do things, may or may not be a big deal. But so rather than having the x and y coordinates that I have here, let me draw a different set of coordinates that are rotated by 6 degrees relative to the ones I defined. 
So I'll call this x prime to make it clear that it's not the same as this x. But um, my x coordinate is going to be along the axis of the block along the direction of t. And my y coordinate is going to be perpendicular to that. And I'll call that y prime. OK, this turns out to be really helpful because it makes, um, again, the solution to the, uh, or the equations that we get easier to solve. So let's get rid of um, all of this stuff. Uh, get rid of some of this stuff and some of this stuff. OK, so now what I will do is I will say the sum of forces in the x prime direction is equal to 0. OK. Well, to do this, I need to, um, I have then that t is entirely in the x prime direction. It has no component in the y prime direction. And is entirely in the y prime direction and has no component in the x prime direction. W, I need to work at a little bit here because it will have a component in the x prime direction and it will have a component in the y prime direction. Okay, so the component of W in the x prime direction, this guy here, is going to be W times sine of 6 degrees. And the component of W in the y prime direction is going to be W cosine 6 degrees. Okay, So with this then, I can say that T, that's the x prime coordinate of T, minus this W sine 6 degrees is equal to 0. And getting the sum of forces in the y prime direction equal to 0. Uh, in the y prime direction, I have n, which is the normal force here, minus w cosine 6 degrees is equal to 0. So you can see then that these are going to be easy to solve. In fact, uh, by looking at this, t is going to be w, which is the weight, this guy, times sine of 6 degrees. n is going to be that same w times cosine 6 degrees. So there you have it. That concludes this video. Uh, what we've done is applied uh, an analysis of uh, statics, we're treating this big block as a particle, which again means that we assume there's no rotational moments applied to it, which is a reasonable assumption given what we've put here. And uh, we've looked at two different ways of solving this, one by using a standard x and y coordinate axis, another by rotating uh, the coordinate axes by six degrees so that our t force and our n force um, align with the x prime and the y prime axes. So hopefully you found this helpful.